uh, Mary apparition tells these people that this is my son pointing to the Antichrist, they'll follow her. They'll follow her advice. They'll start to worship this, this uh, Antichrist. So all over the world, you take the true Christians and rapture them out of here, and you pretty much got it sized up. Speaking of Mary, that if she refers to, say, a pope as the Christ, that won't be anything new. How many of you are aware that the Pope claims to be Jesus? Mm -hmm. the, see, the Pope already claims to be Jesus. And it is official Roman Catholic doc doctrine that he is God on earth. And so when this apparition of Mary and this New Age thing, they all point to a Pope and say he's the Antichrist, or he's the, the, the Christ, that's not far-fetched. It's already laid in Roman Catholic dogma. Jesus said, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Yet the popes took to themselves the name Holy Father, along with all claims of authority that might be assumed by such a title. Pope Innocent III, who fathered the Inquisition, said, The Pope holdeth place on earth not simply of a man, but of the true God. Meanwhile, Pope Nicholas said of himself, I am in all and above all, so that God himself and I, the Vicar of God, hath both one consistory, and I am able to do almost all that God can do. I then, being above all, seem by this reason to be above all gods. Yet despite these biblical warnings, the popes repeatedly claimed they were equal to and above God, and were even called by Catholics, our Lord God, the Pope. The Lateran Council, while addressing Pope Julius II, said to him, Take care that we lose not that salvation, that life and breath which thou hast given us. For thou art shepherd, thou art physician, thou art governor, thou art husbandman, Thou finally art another God on earth. In the 19th century, Cardinal Giuseppe Sarto, who would later become Pope Pius X, declared, The Pope is not simply the representative of Jesus Christ. On the contrary, he is Jesus Christ himself, under the veil of the flesh. Does the Pope speak? It is Jesus Christ who is speaking. Hence, when anyone speaks of the Pope, it is not necessary to examine, but to obey. Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yet Pope Pius IX blasphemously declared, I alone am the successor of the apostles, the vicar of Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The popes have not only made claims to be God, but have insisted that salvation itself depends directly upon obedience to them. Pope Boniface VIII said, We declare, say, define, and pronounce that it is absolutely necessary for the salvation of every human creature to be subject to the Roman Pontiff. Pope Clement VI said, No man outside obedience to the Pope of Rome can ultimately be saved. All who have raised themselves against the faith of the Roman Church and died in final impenitence have been damned and gone down to hell. Even in modern times, Pope John XXIII in 1958 declared, Into this fold of Jesus Christ no man may enter unless he be led by the sovereign pontiff, and only if they be united to him can men be saved. In 1984, Pope John Paul II was quoted as saying, Don't go to God for forgiveness of sins. Come to me. 
The quote was based on a Los Angeles Times article, which reported, rebutting a belief widely shared by Protestants and a growing number of Roman Catholics, Pope John Paul II dismissed the widespread idea that one can obtain forgiveness directly from God. Furthermore, according to traditional Catholicism, obedience to the papacy is said to be required, no matter how dreadful the Pope might be. Catherine Vienna, one of the patron saints of Italy, whose mummified head is still preserved in Rome today, said, Even if the Pope were Satan incarnate, we ought not to raise up our heads against him, but calmly lie down to rest in his bosom. He who rebels against our Father is condemned to death, for that which we do to him, we do to Christ. We honor Christ if we honor the Pope. You know what's really strange is that it, I've done this with uh, Catholic friends. I've quoted the popes and quoted the Council of Trent and told, told them, I said, there's this weird religion I've been reading about. I said, listen to this. And I don't tell them it's Catholic. And they're like, that's nuts. That's, that's stupid. Who would believe that? I said, well, aren't you Catholic? He said, yeah. I said, well, that's what I'm reading. And they would just look at you know, they'd get mad and then they're not speak to me. But they didn't change the fact that they just admitted that their religion is based on nonsense. So not, not only uh, do we need to pray for all of our Catholic friends and relatives because of that, but uh, that's just to show you this convergence that you already have a religion whose head claims to be Jesus on earth, which is blasphemy, and that's an antichrist. And every pope who's ever sat in the Vatican has been an antichrist because every one of them have claimed to be Christ on earth. So biblically, they're antichrist. Now, the other last part of this convergence that I'll, I'll finish on, although we could say a lot more, and that is when it comes to Islam. And in uh, Islam, there is also this um, calling forth going on. An increasing number of Muslims are now praying for the Mahdi. He's, the tw he's called the twelfth... Uh, Imam. Now, this president of Iran has probably been the most famous of all these um, Madhavis, they call them, who are looking for this Mahdi to come and to be this 12th Imam. Everything they believe about this 12th Imam is almost exactly what we expect the Antichrist to be. And But they think it's a good thing because he's supposed to be conquering the world for Islam. He says um, about this 12th Imam, quote, he is a special ruler who ranks just below the Prophet Muhammad. The Mahdi is the restorer of Islam and justice who will rule just before the end of the world. He is a military figure who leads the Islamic armies in conquering the entire world. Now, this fits the model of the war that is said to happen that we studied a few weeks ago. We put it on the radio and everything on Ezekiel 38 that it'll be an Islamic unification of, Russia, of Persia and Russia and those uh, Soviet bloc countries with the Stan on the end from Islam who will join together in an effort to destroy Israel. And uh, this Ahmadinejad believes that, th this is kind of the background, it's kind of weird. He believes that this Mahdi, the 12th Imam, was Muhammad ibn Hassan. He was a direct descendant from Muhammad. And he was the, to be the 12th imam, but uh, he lived in the 9th century, and when he was only five years old, he fell into a well. And the superstition, instead of, obviously he died, but what they came up with was that he was just placed in concealment, and at the end of time, he will emerge as the Mahdi, and that he will then conquer the world for uh, Islam. And just uh, in September 2005, Ahmadinejad stood in New York City in the United Nations. And he called forth for this Mahdi. And his prayer was exactly, quote, O mighty Lord, I pray to you to hasten the emergence of your promised one, that perfect and pure human being, the one that will fill this world with justice and peace. End quote. And all that comes from uh, John McTurnan's book, 
as America has done to Israel, pages 238 and 239. Now, I don't want, I want to end on a, on a biblical note. This shouldn't concern us as far as getting all scared and everything. Uh, this is to be informed. Uh, I hope no one here wants to be what I call a Hosea 4.6 Christian. Do you know what Hosea 4.6 says? It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And a lot of Christians want to be Hosea 4, 6 Christians. They want, they don't want the knowledge. I've joked about making up t-shirts. You know, I'm a Hosea 4, 6. It'll be like the next WWJD, you know. I'll start my own movement here. I'm a Hosea 4, 6 Christian. And on the back it says, pray for me, you know. Well, let's close by uh, looking at Revelation chapter 19. The good thing about being a Christian, not only are you saved and you know the truth, and you're not a Hosea 4, 6 Christian, <laughs> But uh, you know how it ends. We're, we're already told how it ends. And in uh, chapter 19, verses 19 and 20, it says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, that's Jesus, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So this Mahdi, Lord Maitreya, Antichrist that's going to come, they are going to have their day, and they are going to lead the world into a false sense of peace. Paul says when they cry peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction. And God is going to conquer and God is going to cast them into a lake of fire. And how should we react? Well, that's right. This is your response. This is what Jesus told us to do. We see the convergence, the Antichrist convergence taking place, the world being prepared, the world being excited about the Antichrist showing up. Yeah, Luke 21 and verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And it says when these things begin to take place. And we're there. Now, we don't know the day or the hour, but Jesus did say we can see the signs and we can see the signs of the times and know that we're near that time. Consciously think about the fact that He is in you, He's around you, He's aware of everything going on, He's watching over you, and that He could come at any moment and take you home. And John says that's the hope that purifies us. And I'm telling you, it's what gets me excited about serving the Lord and keeps me excited about serving the Lord is I know He's here. He's right here with us right now. He's in every one of us as believers. And at any moment, we're not only going to sense His presence, but one of these days, it could be right now before I finish this sentence, we could be in His presence and looking at His face. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of MP3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.